asked the question if I could tell a little bit more about the manifestation of angels. How do angels manifest themselves on earth? How do they use their energies? Um, so, how does it all work? What makes an angel in a way different from a human or some other spirit? Um, I think the closest thing I can talk about, which is more or less easy for people to relate to, um, when I was still a student, I once um, went to a, a examination for a, a karate um, mixed band, and one of the examiners was a sixth dan karateka, and in a way, how he moved, every movement was precise. It was not too big, not too small. The timing was perfect. His hand was there at the time when it needed to be, not before, not after. So there was a kind of a perfection in every movement, a perfection in timing, a perfection in skill, a perfection in strength. And this is in a way also how an angel uses its ability. Um, it is very absolute, you could say, um, in what it does. It uses the exact right amount of strength at the exact right time. There is no bungling like humans who are trying, who are learning, who are experimenting. It knows exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Because there is, in a way, the omniscience, the, uh, because ultimately all of creation is an emanation of the divine person and the angel itself is also directly in touch with this divine person. So in the same way, actually with, with more accuracy and feeling that I can use my hand, the angel can do whatever it wants with the world because it is all part of the same body. In the same way as I'm like moving my finger, in the same way in my God is using the angel to use another part of its body. And this also is very characteristic of an angelic activity. There is no possibility for resistance against it. Because the angel has the ultimate authority on its side. And we can think that we control ourselves. Ultimately we don't even have perfect self-control. I cannot make myself think differently, laugh, not laugh, be happy, be sad, be in love, fall out of love whenever I want to. I have a very imperfect self-control. We cannot even master ourselves. So it is very strange for us to meet a being which has an absolute mastery and not just of itself, but also of everything it encounters. Because it knows intimately the whole structure, how it works, why it works, and what yeah, uh, pressures will re result in what effects. So for an angel it is in a way almost everything is a mathematical equation. It is very exact. You do this, this is the result. And this is also how they interact with humans like pressing buttons on the machine, on button it turns off, print button it will print something, copy button it will copy something. In the same way they press buttons on humans, on animals, on plants. Um, and through this ultimate knowledge there is also no resistance, no wastage. Um, there is not even the possibility to in a way, fight against an angel or to rebel against an angel because it has more control over your thoughts, over your mind, over your body than you yourself have. And this can be a very overwhelming and even scary um, experience. But it also makes everything which exists in the lower world 
where it is indeed a human being, a plant, a tree, um, obedient or a tool to the divine, if it wishes to. And this is the ultimate limit of the angel's power, if it wishes to. Because ultimately, from the power of the divine, all these divisions have been made, granting independence and free will for every being on the same level of existence. We can struggle against each other, but if something is from a completely different category of power, it cannot simply yeah, overwhelm us and dominate us. Uh, this is forbidden. It doesn't mean it never happens, but it should not happen. And if it does happen, you can appeal to the powers that be for corrections. Um, but it also means that nothing is unalterable for an angelic being. So, uh, life, death, health, karma, life path, knowledge, power, everything can be different. Because the angel also can use the divine power of destruction and creation. So if an angelic being wants me to know something or wants me to have a certain power or talent or a different energy body, I have it. If it doesn't want me to know something or have a power or think of something, it's gone. So ultimately we're very helpless uh, when confronted with the power and authority of an angelic being if it is acting with the authority of the divine. But usually, the, even though the angelic being has all this power, its ability to use it is very limited, because it only acts in concert with the divine will. It only has, you could say, a um, very narrow uh, field in which it is uh, supposed to work or what it is supposed to do, what it is supposed to influence. Because ultimately the divine wants to keep the interference of higher levels, higher beams to a minimum. So angelic actions are usually also very minimal. They can do a lot, they can do pretty much everything, as long as it doesn't confront with their mandate. And this basically the mandate, which is the only limitation to an angelic being. That they've been told to leave certain things alone, or certain people alone, or um, and they obey. And if they don't obey, well then they become like us. Fallen spirits, stripped of their talents, stripped of their power. So ultimately, to have the ultimate power, you have to give up all control. And instead of that you receive a kind of an ultimate control, but it is not by you as an individual. The ultimate control is only possessed by the Supreme Being. So the more closer you get, the more one you become with the Supreme Being, the greater your control will be. And the, greater, the greatest level of control you can have without gaining unification is basically to become enlightened to gain universal enlightenment, and then you get a lot of control. But it is not uncontested control, as it would be for uh, an angel. Because even though you may have reached universal enlightenment, things have a nature of their own which is separate from your nature still, but not separate from the nature of the Creator. So the actions of um, um, an angel are usually um, very limited. Um, they often make sure that, for instance, a person does not die if they're supposed to do something. It doesn't mean that the person won't be horribly hurt or crippled or um, that their whole life path might be in shadows, their family will be destroyed or whatever. 
as long as the person is able to fulfill their function with a minimal amount of interference from the angel, that will be done. Um, angels like working through intermediaries, but if they have to work directly, they like to give their intermediary what is necessary. So sometimes a spirit will come bearing an angelic seal or an angelic symbol to show that it is to other spirits it is not just doing it by itself or for itself but it is actually on a mission which has been sanctioned by the divine itself and often the being which carries that angelic seal will be highly respected by all other spirits of a same or similar level Humanity being, of course, uh, a very big exception to that rule because we well, tend to treat prophets and saints rather poorly. <sighs> but um, fortunately, this is not the same in the rest of the cosmos. Um, so a human who is carrying out the will or being part of a plan of an angelic being will often receive a mark. Um, this mark in the astral often um, is very... Um, yeah, gold is not exact the color. It is more light with a golden hue, with a golden tinge. Um, so often there will be a small mark often placed around the shoulders, the arms, the chest area. Um, so upper arms. These are typical places where an angel will place its mark, sometimes on the front, sometimes on the back, to show that this person is to be left alone, at the very least, or maybe even supported by other spirits which are in the divine cosmos, because it is carrying out a very important task. Uh, so often, this is the most typical thing. Usually the human is not aware that they have been given this sign by an angel that they should be supported by other beings. But other beings will react to this unconsciously. They will feel favorable to this person. They will like them. They will fall in love with them. They will have this desire to help them. Unknowingly, uh, yeah, uh, they're in a way uh, following their own divine core in trying to follow the will of God by trying to support this being. Uh, so actually if you do meet the person with such a mark and you help them in any way you can, you're already making spiritual progress uh, because you're acting like spirits in the divine world, would, uh, divine cosmos would act. And this is greatly appreciated karmatically, so you're really building up good karma if you do this. Um, the other thing which an angel can do if indeed placing the mark is not enough because either there are not enough people or animals or other spirits from the divine cosmos present to provide, to provide enough support is that they give a certain power or a certain talent or a certain tool to the person. Um, so this is often again a symbol of authority or an instrument of authority or conducting power so that the person is still acting according to their own plan, according to their own path, but they have uh, been granted in a way additional authority by the angel so that they're in a way um, promoted you could say in station like you're not, uh, some people are promoted because of their qualities like I might be uh, a very good manager and I climb the ladder and ultimately I go from floor manager to operational manager to top management and uh, beyond and this can be like a slow progress by developing the skills by developing the powers and growing into every new task but sometimes people get bumped up so there's a certain opening somebody is needed to for instance make the new yeah, strategy for the company and they just grab somebody who they think has the right idea and put them in that position. And this person might not have the right qualifications but they have a certain something which makes them best suitable for the job even though they cannot fill the shoes completely because of their lack of experience, control, awareness. 
And in the same way, such a mark of um, divine authority will also bump the person up to a position which they would normally not be able to hold. Um, if the person does well with this authority, because they are in that position, they can grow into it. They can ultimately, yeah, by being placed there, evolve into yeah, uh, staying there. And then the divine authority is ultimately replaced by their own personal authority again. Uh, but more often, this is a very temporary thing. So the divine authority is granted while the person is working on the task. If their task has been completed, if the divine will has been satisfied, that authority is then taken away again and the person goes back to their own level and has to climb up by themselves. But by having had the experience of being on the higher level, they will be able to yeah, work with greater understanding to progress more quickly. Um, but both events are relatively rare, both the granting of authority and the um, yeah, granting of the seal of approval. Um, it's even more rare for an angelic being to get involved directly. Usually they direct uh, other spirits to yeah, support or inspire. Um, it is however possible that if in a way the opposition is of a very high level that angelic beings will get involved personally. So for instance if there is a person who is disrupting the divine plan and this person is not just an ordinary human but for instance they are a spiritual master or they are enlightened um, or they are part of a very powerful group or even leaders of a very powerful group uh, magical group I mean here and then often for the people who exist on that same level of existence they cannot do anything about it if I were to pick a fight with somebody who has reached a very high state of enlightenment nothing I could do could influence them so this is something they cannot in a way leave to lesser beings they really need to get involved personally so when there's a problem with the spiritual master, angels can get involved. If there's problems with an enlightened person or a saint, angels tend to get involved. Also, if there's problems with an egregore, angels will get involved. But on a normal human everyday scale, angels are not getting direct personally involved in things. And even with problems um, with incarnated uh, yeah, spiritual masters or enlightened beings, they will often even then tend to just give the authority or the power to another human to oppose them. Because ultimately they feel that the course of human development is the choice of the human spirit. And two spirits can compete with each other and one can win. This is very normal and it is simply um, also an incentive if you want humanity to evolve your way well then you should develop yourself so you can guide humanity to evolve in that way and if you don't develop yourself then you will have to follow whoever is dictating the course of humanity so in that way the angel will try to help the evolution and the development of certain people who are attuned to the divine will but they have to do it themselves as much as possible. And ultimately, the choice is also not always theirs. Like, sometimes the divine has a preference to say, like, okay, it would be good if that could go as much as possible like that. But ultimately, they will just weigh the scales a little bit to help a certain side to be as successful as possible. But ultimately, if that side would in a way uh, attain a position which they cannot maintain because they don't have the strength, the wisdom and the quality that also is no basis for the future. All their successes would evaporate at the moment the divine support would stop. So there's always a very big limit to the amount of divine support because ultimately we're supposed to do things ourselves, to maintain things ourselves. The divine will 
accelerate us, but it will not support us or bear us if we cannot do it ourselves. So, for instance, if the divine, I'm having a conflict with somebody else, the divine might support me, but which would give me a bit of an advantage. But the advantage will never be in such a way that it will allow me to overpower a person while I have actually less qualities. It is very much also the quality of the people who create a stable path for humanity. And ultimately these are egregores, these are spiritual groups, these are religions, um, because it's usually not up to one person, because one person is often just also uh, a tool or a figurehead for a larger group. So I hope this answers some of the questions of angelic involvement. Uh, it's not easy to detect, but it is detectable if you can um, see the energy body clearly enough. So uh, what you're looking for are often in a way also conduits, things which exist on more than one energy level. Um, so often the lower part of such an angelic seal or symbol of authority is in the higher astral and it tends to extend all the way through the collective consciousness up into uh, the lower form of world. So this is the typical range of um, such an implant or such a gift. Um, so if you're able to attune to these energies you can uh, try to find them on people and often if you yeah, uh, try to look for them on um, saints or um, very influential leaders, uh, you will find them, but not with all of them, of course. Some people are just leaders by themselves without having uh, angelic interference um, to help them attain that position. They just do it out of their own maturity, out of their own karma.